What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in and guys, this one is a big one. Uh, I've been researching this project for about three days straight and it is tough to grasp, but I think I got it, but yet I don't think I got it. But anyways, guys, this one is massive in my opinion, but again, as always, it is not financial advice. This is just my opinion on the project. You guys, please do you. I'm going to do me. Do what you want. And guys, good luck out there and stay safe and always pray to God. That's all you can do and that's all you need to do. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, actually, it's like 2 in the morning right now or like 1 in the morning or something. I don't know. I can barely see. Um, but anyways, uh, I got to get this out there to you guys so you guys can check it out. I'm trying to make as much content as, as I can for you guys. I, I This isn't my full-time job, but I do this on the side, and it takes up a lot of time. So show me some love. Smash up the like. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell notification. That way you guys get notified every time you make a new video. If not, I don't care. I like making these videos, and I like helping people who want to be helped. So if you want to help out more people, smash up the like, subscribe, bell button. If not, who cares? Anyways, let's go into it. What is Constellation? What is DAG? Well, guys, this is similar to like a IOTA. Um, if you guys don't know what IOTA is, go ahead and watch my video. It is not a blockchain. Um, it is basically a, I consider it like a virus. So say I'm infected as a human and I infect another human. Uh, now both of us, us two humans, can now infect more humans and then those humans are in, and that's how the transactions go so it's almost like um you start with one then it goes to two peeps and then it goes to four peeps and so on so similar to like sharding but it's not sharding <laughs> so however you can explain that so what is a deck so again um yeah this is how they explain it so in tradition i don't know why they use this example it's weird so in more traditional blockchains the host provides foods and drinks resources etc for the party and when the guest arrives, the amount of resources can accommodate so many people. It's true, because you can only buy so much. The portions are small, and then eventually everything runs out and the party ends. That's how it always happens. Think of Constellation like a potluck. So everyone brings their own food and drinks, a.k.a. everyone can check everyone out at the cash register, or a.k.a. everyone can help someone verify a transaction, so on. The more resources, the party keeps going. This is the nature of Constellation. So as more and more join in this network, the speeds of the transactions are basically infinitely scalable. So it's really cool, really interesting. And they also have a microservice approach, which basically is um, a large application, is built as a suite or a modular service. So basically um, a business can have their own little nodes. So similar to like Polkadot or Cosmos, you can run your own chain but yet you are still governed by the ecosystem where actually have the transactions. So like a good example of this is um, obviously Polkadot and Cosmos or a way you can relate it that you guys can grasp it and understand is you have the United States, but yet you still have 50 different states that do their own thing, but yet you still have the whole United States. So. That's how you can consider it. You can have like a bunch of different little chains or like the Ethereum ecosystem. You can have a bunch of different ERC-20s, but yet they have Ethereum. So that's how you can relate it. Uh, these blockchains can, or not blockchains, these networks can launch their own nodes, their own gig. They can do their own stuff. This is why the Air Force has actually partnered with these guys. Guys, I, I, you, you heard me right. The Air Force. They also had Splunk partner with them. Moby, Hyperledger. Guys, massive. Why is this massive? Guys, this is the future of AI. What is Moby? These are autonomous vehicles. How crazy is this? Listen to this. All right, so we're gonna get into a future where everyone's driving these autonomous vehicles and you can't smash the pedal to the metal when you're late. No, your, your wallet or your car is gonna have its own wallet. It's gonna be driving. It's gonna have to go at a certain speed limit. And in order to get to your work faster, you're going to have to pay cars next to you in either Constellation or DAG tokens, Nano, IOTA tokens. I don't know. Who cares? But you're going to pay cars to have them slide over just a bit so you can speed up and make it to work faster than them. Guys, it's going to be massive. Just think about it. You can pay for tolls. You can pay for your food. Just driving around in your car. 
or forget it, you're not in cars anymore. Now we just have like robotic arms or like our wallet is connected to our brain. Uh, who knows what will happen? But we just walk into a restaurant we, or Amazon, we have a digital identity and we're automatically checking out junk and they're automatically billing us. I mean, it, it's crazy and scary to hear about that, but guys, that's the future. Um, you can also view all their partners here if you guys want to look into it. But guys, Air Force, that's enough for me. Splunk, Mobi, Mobi, um, IE, Chainlink. Guys, they're actually running their own node on Chainlink. Massive. They got a bunch of VCs working with them too, guys. Look, Air Force, wham, massive. I mean, guys, I don't know. People are missing this one. They're looking over it. But hey, we'll see what happens. If you guys are joining in the Digi Squad, you would have got like the DL on this before it even came out. So guys, join the Digi Squad. It's in the link in the description below. But let's go ahead and talk about this. What is this? Oh, they're also launching a uh, cross-chain um, exchanges. So what this exchange is going to do is it's going to allow you to swap different tokens for other tokens on different exchanges. Massive. Just like Uniswap is all ERC. Well, this one, they're going to be able to do it on different exchanges. And wait, don't forget this, guys. Fee-less. Not, not fees. Fee-less. <laughs> like no fees? Anyways, that's crazy. And they have a, it's massive with the, um, what is it, L, I, I just say L underscore zero, but basically it's just called layer zero. And it allows these different projects to launch their own chains. Guys, so if you don't like Ethereum, you don't like their gas fees, what do you do? Well, you leave, go for it, that's fine. So this allows you to do it. You can go on Constellation or DAG, build your own chain, AKA why the Air Force is using them so they can have their own chain. And it's not a blockchain. They can have their own ecosystem. And the reason why they do this is, well, they don't want their data that they have being public. These guys are transferring very, very sensitive and secure information and they can do it on their own chain. Now, why is this important? Okay, so this is very important because these guys are doing pen and paper using centralized junk and going on centralized data that can be tapped and wired to all kinds of garbage. And look, now it can stay hidden and they need this data transferred. I mean, just think about it. You're, you're depending on like, a good example is Theta. The reason why Theta is thriving so much is because uh, YouTube can't keep up with the information that needs to be sent out uh, or like high quality information. Now think if you're, a good example is Zoom. You're doing a, um, a uh, what is it, a, a surgery, and you're doing like a hip replacement or something, and you aren't there. You're just doing a Zoom call, and you're using a robotic arm. Guys, this is legit. This is actually really happening. But now you have this robotic arm that if it's not getting 5G or 6G signals, it's going to be getting like, maybe 0.5 seconds delay. Now, if that robotic arm is moving and it's cutting into an organ or a heart or a vein and they aren't getting that real time, real speed, instant information, well, they're gonna be slicing people's hearts and arteries off. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a little intense. But guys, it's it's true. They, they actually have it. There's a company, I can't remember what it's called, but I was looking into it. It's like a robotic arm company. Just look it up on Google. Uh, it's like um, IRCS or something like that. Crazy technology. But anyways, guys, we're getting off um, topic, but let's talk about Constellation, what they're doing. We already talked about their partners. Obviously, that is saying something. So, okay, don't forget about that. Here's how you can kind of look at their um, ecosystem. So basically what they're claiming DAG will do is basically going to do what big data, uh, big data is going to be with this, uh, like what Bitcoin did to money. So DAG's going to do this to big data. It's going to basically make it like, um, people call it, uh, what is it? Block, not blockchain, th web 3.0. That's what it is. So first you have Bitcoin. Bitcoin's great. Cool. I can send you money and you can give me a package. I hope you give me my package. Um, that's why we have credit cards. But then it's like, okay, wait, am I going to send you the money first or are you going to send me the Bitcoin first? Hmm. Well, if... I'm getting the Bitcoin first, then it'll be okay, because then I'll take your Bitcoin, I'll keep my package and run. No, I'm just kidding, guys. No, that's wrong to do. But anyways, so Ethereum solves this. So Ethereum, generation two, creates a smart contract. 
it says, okay, if Johnny Appleseed puts that package in that um, or ships it out or has it in that smart contract protocol, then Freddie Evans is going to go ahead and transfer his Bitcoin into the smart contract. Both people release both of their assets and boom, swaps made. Awesome. Sweet. Now, how can this get better? Well, now we have Generation 3 Constellation Network. Now, this is allowing for something even more complex. So this is transferring data instead of just sending like simple like, oh yeah, I'm going to send Johnny a package and then I'm going to send Jeff some Ethereum or because that's so cool. No, now we're actually sending data, guys. This is massive. Now we're sending like information. Uh, so like just how emails like are sent full of information and attachments and junk. Well, that's what Constellation Network is basically doing. So another good example of this is, and it's also going to be interoperable. So if you're wanting to send a message like through Ethereum, it can be sent through DAG by sending it through a cross chain, etc. So this is sending information. So it's not storing the information. It's basically doing what the internet does. So the internet does not store any information, but it allows you to connect to servers in a different area to pull that information. So like you research a website, it's got a bunch of data on it, but your computer doesn't store all that junk. Just like you can search on YouTube, I can bet you a billion dollars. Actually, no, I'll put I'll put a billion dollars, trillion dollars, whatever you want to name, and then I'll add a, about 40 more zeros after that number, as long as the first number is more than zero. Then I will just say, all right, I'll bet all whatever that is, that your computer is not storing all the videos that are on YouTube. Yet, you can still go on your computer, go on YouTube, and pull up any video that you want. That's, that's mind blowing. Now this is what DAG's doing. So DAG is a little different because that YouTube is stored on a different, well, DAG is looking to also um, help with the storage too in the future, but right now they're doing the transfer data. So this is basically the message center and it sends back and forth and it's like instant. It's, uh, I wouldn't say it's instant, but it's really fast. So how can we explain this? Diving into the tech. Constellations technology allows this by utilizing a DAG, the directed acyclic graph protocol and customized state channels, AKA Air Force, IBM, UPS, whatever company you wanna make and embraces an evolution to smart contracts that allows new data sources to integrate on DLT, Distributed Ledger Technology. Constellation's DAG consensus model, aka PRO, Proof of Reputable Observations, allows to organize the network to match through, or to match throughput needs of enterprise databases while handling a higher level consensus to prevent double spend. It will also provide an ability to identify malicious behavior and nullified nodes when applying this um, technology to op optimize the network for security and high throughput. Now after this is done, they also provide cybersecurity developer tools that are integrated early into the development workflow and leverage the resilience of a blockchain network and encryption with compatible architecture and scalability of big data management solutions like Splunk, MongoDB, Kafika. There's several different networks, guys. So here are some of the uh, characteristics of DAG or uh, I guess you can say Constellation. It's kind of, it's, it's neat that they got the ticker symbol DAG because that's what all the other ones are. Improved security, infinite scalability. Again, we've explained the infinite scalability We've explained the security. The more people on the network, the more secure it's going to be. Ease of adoption, very easy to use. In fact, the coding language is actually really easy to use. It uses Java and Scala as the main programming languages. More than 9 million developers worldwide. That's the problem with Ethereum is they only have 80,000 that know Solidity. There's probably a little more now, but again, guys, I'm not a bash on Ethereum. In fact, Ethereum, I'm the most bullish on just period and the tokenomics. We'll explain the tokenomics later. And as here's also their node on Chainlink, just so you guys can see it. Look, these guys are running a node on Chainlink and there's only 134 nodes and they actually have one of them. So I guess you can say good for them. <laughs>
Let's go ahead and check out their GitHub real quick before we get into the breakdown. You guys can see the GitHub is a little bit sparse and they only have one person on it. I was talking to the um, Telegram chat about it. Uh, the Telegram is hit and miss. Um, they were, I mean, then again, they, they are getting a lot of um, people in there, so they are, they are probably pretty busy. Um, but anyways, uh, when you find a good one to answer questions, there is one guy, um, the big gumbo or something. I can't think of his name. He's really good with questions, uh, provided really good answers. Um, so shout out to him. But anyways, um, you guys can see their GitHub here and we'll go ahead and break down the tokenomics. So yes, this is a instant and fee-less transaction to a point. So like you can't just send unlimited transactions unless you hold a certain amount of DAGs. So sure, you can send a few here and there, but eventually it's not, it, it won't go through. So like, just like there's different blocks on Ethereum, then eventually you'll get to the point when you're sending out so many transactions that it won't go through or it'll wait till the next block or you'll have to have a certain amount. Uh, then it also has a direct streaming validation through the HGTP protocol. So basically um, with, internet you have the http protocol which is or htt protocol um which basically allows you to access different websites um, like youtube for example without storing it on your computer then it also has the integration of external data on the blockchain and then you also have the common programming languages so you can create your own uh, blockchain and network and then the use of l0 applications so basically the state channels, AKA just like the paired chains on Polkadot or the different, um, I think it's called hubs on Cosmo. And this is similar to how this will work with the DAG. So if you hold a certain amount of DAG or percentage of the amount, you're gonna have higher uh, bandwidth. So what bandwidth is, is well, when you talk about it with internet, it's basically loading speeds or transaction speeds. Guys, th this is um, really a complex project um, it, it's it's difficult to grasp. I'm doing the best I can to explain it. Um, in reading the stuff, it, it is very technology heavy. Um, but I, I will say this is how you this is the best way to relate it. Um, similar to how like Polkadot has their own pair chains, or Cosmos has their own separate uh, ecosystems or sec separate chains that or separate blockchains that do their own thing. That's similar to how you can relate DAG. They're allowing these protocols to create their own little tangles or their own little um, DAGs or uh, whatever they're called, hash graphs. And they can have their own thing running and have their own transactions on it. Yet they're still on the full entire ecosystem of the DAG that are publicly posted. So like there's like the main chain and then you have these like little side chains and separate chains. And so that's how you can relate it. It's a little difficult to understand, but the reason why this is important is because this is, it's a little different than a blockchain. So instead of having certain validations or certain people verifying it, it's a lot quicker to have a DAG because it's instant and it can be fee-less. You don't have to have these miners mining these different things. And it's important to be fee-less because a lot of these guys are trying to send over different transactions and send over different information instantly within seconds and they're sending over multiple transactions or multiple, um, I guess you can say, not smart contracts, but uh, initiations on the uh, chain. So that's why they're gonna need something like this. I mean, it says a lot when you're stinking having um, the Air Force partner up or Splunk partner up. Guys, that's massive and, and Moby, um, that's that's massive in itself. Yeah, IOTA's partner with them as well, but that, that's telling you the technology that they're looking at. They're also looking into getting into DeFi as well, so similar to like Phantom. Guys, DAGs are gonna be big in my opinion. That's why I hold a little bit of uh, most of them because DAGs, I mean, Nano was like a, um, uh, I guess you can say a brain or a mind opener for me because uh, guys, no one likes fees. No one likes to pay trading fees or sending fees and so on and that makes sense but the, there's a reason for the fees to get rid of spam so then it makes sense to like have somewhat of a incentive for it especially because miners don't work for free so you gotta there's got to be a fine line like ethereum those gas fees that's way too much that's very exorbitant but anyways 
just so you guys can see the concept. But here are a couple of other guys. Ben Jorgensen. Uh, you got Wyatt Weldman. Wyatt Weldman is he's like a, a math geek. He's pretty smart. Um, ben Jorgensen. He did come from the restaurant industry, so I don't really see where he's coming into play on this. I would assume maybe like um, maybe networking and whatnot. He seems very knowledgeable. Um, so very smart guy. Uh, Benjamin Diggles. Uh, he's very interesting. This guy actually worked over at Oracle. Uh, he's basically the guy who's the chief revenue officer. Uh, he's helping getting these contracts, these different partnerships and so on. And guys, he's ripping and rolling. He's getting it done. Say, guys, they're building a really good ecosystem. I'm, I'm really proud of this team right here. They're doing a really good job. Um, but guys, time will tell on this as always. Uh, that's a quick wrap up, a quick look into it. There's so much more I can get into on this. Guys, I, I literally looked over it three, four days straight and it is some intense junk. Um, there are some bear things on it, um, being that the transactions, you can actually go onto their Explorer. It doesn't really load on CoinGecko, but all you gotta do is simply just uh, subtract that and go onto DAG Explorer. Uh, it's just an error with CoinGecko. But anyways, you guys can see there's really not a bunch of transactions, um, but then again, it, it, it makes sense. It's not really a bunch because it's not really, it doesn't really have anything built on it. It's not that it's a dead chain, it's still being built. It's an early chain, you guys are getting in early. Um, uh, there is a lot of speculation, in my opinion, possibly priced into this. Um, do I think it could still go up? Yes. Do I think it could still go down? Of course. It can go massively down, just look at this. That's very scary right there. But again, time will tell, we'll see what happens on this. Um, I'm not a financial advisor, I'm not financial, this is not financial advice in any way. This is just for entertainment purposes only, man. Um, and this allows me to like get some information out there, talk to you guys about this junk. And anyways, guys, if you enjoyed the video and you guys see that like button and that bell notification and they aren't smashed or that subscribe button, go ahead and hit them for me. Um, Want to know why? Because it's cool. And when you do that, fireworks happen. And then when fireworks happen, the fireworks go out. And then when they go out, I don't know. That's it. I, I didn't know where I was going with that, but it was cool. I know you guys are asking yourself, okay, great, whatever. There's so many DAGs out there. Why is this one so cool? What is so special about this? Well, well let's break it down. So first you have the typical blockchain. The one block is has their own set of transactions. The next block includes those transactions and, and then has the additional transactions and it makes the next block and so on. So everything's organized, neat, whatever. There can only be so much scalability in that because there's only so much that can fit in a block. And you have IOTA. They have all this crazy junk that's having all these different transactions, all this stuff going on. And the more that get on here, the more transactions that are made. But is there a actual trusted chain? No, not really at all. <laughs> so now we have the DAG, uh, which is going to come into here and says, okay, we have all these different nodes and then they're all going to be made up into a certain block or a certain um, transaction and it's gonna be extended onto the trust chain and all those are made into this chain and then the process starts all over and it relies on the transaction order for, val for validity. So yes, it'll still have these in the chain but then the next block will have now, okay, so say for example, you have three in one block. Now it's gonna have six in one block. Now it's gonna have all these in one block. Now it's gonna have all these in one block and it's verified so it's actually in an orderly process. And then you have another section where you have the uh, Hilo chain. And this is how you can explain the Hilo chain. So Bob is basically is a star node and his transaction is recorded on the node's local ledger. Then the transactions are signed by the initiator, Bob, and the counterparty broadcasted to the network via gossip or from transaction to transaction, great. Now, it's get pooled, now it gets pooled with all the other transactions like you guys saw, all these different squares. Hang on, let me find all these different squares. These are pooled all into one transaction. And then they go into the black hole, like all these into this. And then once they're in the black hole, they're never seen again. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Anyways, so now a star cluster formed of stars, which are the different transactions, are elected to take part in the consensus. So basically they make up that black hole and the locally or the the hash block is the um, catamorphic fold function of the transaction pool which includes the previous blocks value so 
basically the previous block, all those transactions are in the current block and then the current transactions, like we told you. Like my transaction was in the last one, but now I transacted with you in the new one. So it has my last transaction and my new transaction. So it includes both of it. Hard to understand, but it's, again, this is a difficult project to understand, but guys, it's, it's crazy technology. Again, let me remind you, Splunk, Mobileye, US Air Force, okay. Anyways, back to what we were talking about. And then the hash blocks are gossiped upwards into transaction pools into higher galaxy tier pools, like we explained to the uh, black hole or a galaxy cluster forms by consensus, agreeing on all the transactions and ordering to form the black hole block. So all the transactions make up that block. And then added, and then they also add the hash of the previous block into this function. Black holes are blocks of hash local sensitive hash blocks. So basically black holes stack upon each other and so on. Different blocks. Hard to explain. Hope that helps a bit. I know it's a little confusing. Um, that's, it's, it's got some high tech junk in it. And then also on top of that, each of these nodes, they are going to get a reputation score. So the more you are a good actor, the more transactions you get to process and so on. This is also another thing. This is not to FUD out IOTA and do all kinds of garbage because I'm bullish on IOTA too. But I want to talk about this as well. IOTA, there was a point of time about 12 days when there was like a hack or an issue on it where they literally just pulled the main node and no more transactions could go through. Guys, why is this important? Well, if you can just pull one node and shut down the whole network, well, that means it's pretty centralized. Just imagine if the government could shut down one Bitcoin node and shut down the Bitcoin blockchain. Hmm, I don't know, just a thought, guys. This is also another thing you guys wanna look at. Look at the Constellation ecosystem. Just pause this video, zoom in to all of these, and this is who they're working with. Look, guys, Hyperledger, look at all this. IBM, Intel, American Express, I mean, guys, these are major companies. These guys are only rated at a $200 million market cap. Guys, these guys are looking to be in big data. I mean, literally, while we were streaming this video, this token went up like 17%. Um, anyways, just kidding. Um, guys, this is not financial advice, just my opinion on the project. That's how you can differentiate it from IOTA. Let me go ahead and give you like a full breakdown of the different ones so you guys can see all of them. Here's the full breakdown right here. You got Constellation, Ethereum, IOTA, and all these guys. So look, DAG, DAG, we'll compare just to IOTA. Local proof of work, proof of work, meme reputation, and source. So we already explained to you guys the uh, reputation, how, well, not explained it, but we talked about it. As smart contracts, IOTA, it has somewhat of smart contracts, not like it. I, Nano does not, obviously. Zillica, yeah, they do. Um, but Zillica is a little bit different. It's not a DAG. It is a smart contract protocol and it is a blockchain. Um, easy programming language. IOTA doesn't have any. Horizontally scalable, yes. So is IOTA. Great. And centers on the network, yes. Uh, they're mined via reputation. And it's over a 10-year period. However, on uh, IOTA, no. There are none. So guys, uh, just so you guys can see it, and yes, IOTA is implementing smart contracts, so guys do keep that in mind. This is a little bit dated when it says that, so that's why I was saying a portion that it's working on getting that, so keep that in mind. Anyway, uh, Proverbs chapter 28, verses six. Better the poor whose walk is blameless than the rich whose ways are perverse. Basically what this means, guys, is money isn't everything. Just keep that in mind, guys. That's, that's why you see a lot of famous people um, who kill themselves. It's like, how are you killing yourselves? You got so much money. Well, they haven't found a purpose in life. Guys, you need to find your purpose in life. And my purpose in life is teach anyone and everyone I know about God because that's what really matters. If that's not your gig, that's fine. If I'm right and you're wrong, what happens? If I'm wrong, you're right, what happens? Who cares? Think about that. Rewind that, listen to what I just said, think about it. Thanks for watching, guys.
Thanks for watching guys. If you guys are new to the channel, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button and hit that bell notification. That way you guys can be ahead of the game every time we make a new video. All right guys, thanks for watching. And without you guys watching, I wouldn't keep doing these videos, but I'm hoping I'm helping you guys. If I am, smash that like button. Um, go ahead and get started with the triple threat. Go ahead and start with the Celsius account. Here's a referral link where you guys can earn $20 in BTC. Really awesome, set up a Celsius account, easy to use, and you get crazy interest rates on your Celsius account, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, you name it. The next one in the triple threat is a crypto.com account. Super easy to use, super easy to set up, really easy to buy and sell on it. I don't like how it doesn't have limit orders, but really easy to use. And here's another referral code for 25 bucks in CRO. Um, here's the referral link. A8GP, you guys can read it. But anyways, guys, a cool place to buy cryptocurrency on the go. Allows you to buy small altcoins, um, unlike Celsius. Celsius is more so like your bank account. And the third one, this one is a fun one, uh, Voyager. This one is more so where you can buy with limit orders. It doesn't have as many altcoins as crypto.com, but it's really easy to use, easy to set up. And yes, this one does come with a referral link as well, and you'll get $25 in BTC. Um, this is how you can do a limit order, super easy to use, and they don't charge any trading fees whatsoever. Here's the referral link. You can't copy and paste it, but you can look in the description to copy and paste, and you can put that in and set one up. 25 bucks, free BTC. This is the funnest one though, Lolly, free. There is a referral link to this one too. I've actually won 100,000 sats one time on one of the uh, taps, which is worth like 100 bucks in Bitcoin. So it's crazy. Um, look, and there's even proof in the wallet. Look at that, daily stack, 101. Guys, set one up, it's really easy to do. Download a Lolly account and just set it up. And of course, guys, if you guys are a pro, there's a link in the description so you guys can sign up with KuCoin and Binance US to get some trading fee discounts. Thanks.